back guys me danielle danny buttons and we are back today with part two of our massive disney vitro color buddy chat thing that we're doing here i managed to zoom out a little farther so hopefully you can see even more but hopefully that does not mean we'll see my hair we'll see how it goes i also now can't see my camera from sitting so we have to keep our fingers crossed that we stay filming the whole time. Before I start, I just got the sweetest gift in the mail. See, I don't even know if I'm showing you. All right, from Jamie, Jamie's Coloring Love, who I will of course link down below. And at this point, she's basically permanently linked down there. But she sent me a turtle bracelet and it's so sweet. And it was such a nice surprise and We've been talking so much and it's been so great. So that's from her and I'm gonna be wearing it in all my videos now. And it kind of matches what we're doing because this guy would totally live with Ariel under the sea. So if you missed part one, I'm surprised because this should very obviously say part two, but I'll have part one linked. And what we're doing is a four part color and chat to this massive picture. And today we're gonna work more on the water, I think, might as well. And while we are coloring, we are actually going to be doing some ranking of different Disney-related things. So in part one, we ranked my favorite princesses. And today in part two, we're going to be ranking all of the Pixar movies. So let me get my sharpener out. There are 22 Pixar movies currently in existence, like official ones, and there I've only seen 20 of them. I'll be upfront about it now. I never saw Cars 2 or Cars 3, um, and you'll see that Cars ranks pretty low, so kind of a spoiler alert. But what I'm also doing is I'm literally putting on a one hour timer. I'm hoping that my watch lasts. I've been having problems. So anyway, the watch is on, one hour timer. Here we go, we're gonna get ranking. So I'm ranking 20 of, of Pixar's 22 current releases. Yes, also I realized I don't have my blender. Here it is, got my blender, now we're ready. I'm sorry that this was very chaotic. I should have prepared more before starting my timer. But anyway, yes, 20 Disney Pixar films. And we're gonna start right at the bottom. And if you did see my last video, I do not think you'll be surprised to find out that number 20 is Brave. <laughs> I hate that movie, guys. It's not good. I really just don't like it. Uh, it rubbed me the wrong way right in theaters didn't like it rewatched a second time didn't like it all the hype i hear about it don't like it oh also i'll say this again this will be spoilers for any of these movies i don't know if there definitely will be but it's definitely a possibility and we're even talking about the most recent one onward so be on the lookout for that i hope that if you're a fan of all these disney pixar that you've seen these things or don't mind, but just in case I'm warning you, here it is. I hate Brave. I really talked about it more in the princess video. I just think that she was very whiny and was getting touted for being independent, but she's an actual child. So like she does need to listen to her parents and like there is a protocol and then she was just Turned her mom into a bear, and I don't know. Just, it was not my favorite film from them, for certain. So, we're not even gonna worry about that anymore. My next least favorite, so coming in at number 19, is The Good Dinosaur. Now, of any of the movies on here, this might be the one that you haven't seen, because this one was weird. <laughs> I don't understand what was going on. Um, I was excited to see it when I heard about it. I thought it was gonna be really cute. It has a really sad scene in it, like a lot of other Pixar movies, but it was just weird. Um, there's just a scene where they're essentially doing drugs and they're like tripped out. And I thought that was really strange. There's a scene 
where they like bite off the wing of a pterodactyl. That was horrifying. There were just some very strange scenes and I don't know, it just felt like the premise of it being the little, I guess, caveman boy, I don't know, Neanderthal, child, whatever you want to say, felt like the Croods and I don't like DreamWorks, which is a whole nother can of worms, but I'm not um, statistically, no, historically, that's where I'm going for. Historically, I'm not a DreamWorks fan. So I didn't like Big, The Good Dinosaur. I, watch it, formulate your own opinions. But if you're going based off mine, like if you align with me in a lot of other ways, it's not a good one. So just keep that in mind. And again, I really think like for littler children that it must have been terrifying because there were a few moments that I was like, Ugh! and I was a full blown adult. One who's afraid of a lot of things, I will admit, but still, no, no. All right, number 18. This one is another big surprise for a lot of people, but number 18 is Toy Story 2. I don't like Jessie, really, is the answer to that story. Um, as a kid, I didn't like any Toy Stories, which again, might have been me being a hipster. But now, I just don't like Toy Story 2, and I don't like Jessie. I didn't like her story. I didn't like the whole plot of that one. I don't know. I just didn't think it was very well done. So, not much to say about Toy Story 2. And we have three more Toy Stories to discuss. So, we'll just skip right on past that. Number 17. It may actually surprise you how high up this got after I said I didn't see their sequels. But number 17 is Cars. Because what was good about Cars is how, like, very, 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 very innovative it was. Like, I thought the concept for Cars was really cool. I didn't particularly love it as a movie. But it was very unique. And I definitely appreciated what it did or what it tried to do. I just, I think I'm just not into like race cars and things like that. So I felt kind of whatever. But again, the idea of the cars and it's a very like thought out area and land and like all the little real life touches. I love things like that. So that's how it got that high up. But yeah, yes. I'm also, I've gone way too quick again, so I'm going to do a blending timeout where I blend up some stuff and talk about other things. When I'm blending, I like to do all one color first and then switch to the other color. Uh, I don't even know, again, like I haven't colored in this book in so long, a full picture, that who knows if any of this is worth it. I've recently discovered the magic of Gamsol, but after I filmed that live, like on the rewatch, people commented that to be much more careful about fumes. So of course the second time I used it, I was like, oh no, I feel dizzy. And I don't know if it was just in my head or if it was actually the fumes. So we're gonna avoid that for this page for sure. And obviously we're doing a four part color in chat, so. I have time to blend on screen. Oh, I'll give you an update. So the video that just went up yesterday. Okay, right now it is the 21st and this video is going up on the 24th of August. So we're not too far ahead of the game, but the video that went up on the 20th, which was the outlining video, which I guess I will link above, why not? Uh, was, I talked about Tag, the game we're playing which is basically, um, it's six of us. So it's me, my two cousins, and all of our significant others. And we each have to tag people. It's a whole long thing, but like each of us is a color and then you have a target and you have to tag them in certain ways. And my update on that is I have now officially tagged two people and I have plans on tagging the third tomorrow. So I am like cruising along and right now I'm definitely winning. But we'll see what happens after tomorrow. 
I have a bad feeling that my target tomorrow has me. And then if that happens, I don't know what, ha like, is the game over? Did I ruin it? Because in theory, once you tag somebody, you get their target. But if he has me, I can't tag myself. So I don't know what to do about that. But it was very well executed tagging. If I do say so myself, I lured my person to my house. I don't drive, so I thought that I was gonna be terrible at this game and that it was just, I was a sitting duck, but I lured my person over under false pretenses and I filmed my tagging them too for later, for posterity. And then my person actually had Sam. So I just was like, oh, Sam, wanna know what I did? And he's like, sure. And then I did the exact same thing and I was like, ha you've been tagged too, sucker. So that was a lot of fun for me. So now I'm winning. So that was just my update on that. Hopefully tomorrow I will have another person tagged. And then I think there will just be three of us left. And we'll see what happens. Because I don't understand how the people left haven't tagged each other. But it's possible they have and we just haven't been talking about it. I don't know. I'm very confused still how this game is going, but I'm winning, so whatever. <sighs> Another problem I have when I'm filming, which now people have told me over and oh, time and again, over and over, that I don't need to worry about filming every second with speaking, which is definitely great and reassuring. Samuel! Don't let her bark. Sorry, Samuel is watching the game. I kicked him out of the office. He's watching basketball in the living room. But um, yeah, people have told me I don't need to speak for the whole time, which is definitely reassuring. And I'm definitely going to take more breathing breaks while filming. But I think when I do have things to say, I like get it so excited to say them that I rush through that. And then I like, talk really really fast and get myself actually out of breath from excitement which is foolish I tell you so I'm just gonna take a second and finish blending all this out and then we'll move on to our next number in the countdown so I'm interested in seeing I have a feeling that this list is gonna be even more divisive than the princesses because I think overall people love their favorite princess but I feel like one there's less choices and two it's almost like we're over the fight for that like we just admit that our favorites are favorite and it doesn't really matter what other people think anymore and like I also have a feeling that a lot of people's favorites will align with who they grew up with, but we'll see. We'll see as the answers roll in on that one. But for this, there's so many movies that I have no idea how this is gonna go. So we'll see, because I think even like putting any Toy Story that low, and obviously somebody loves Brave, it's just not me, but I think I might have already made people angry. So, fun times. So, I, what number are we on? 16, okay, number 16. This is another, I'm gonna discuss a lot of spoilers right here because for me, number 16 is Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 made me very angry. My biggest problem with Toy Story 4 is like the plot I hated the whole plot. Like, the new characters were fine. I, I do love seeing all the toys again. I love their hijinks. Personally, I think Toy Story would make such a great TV show. And, like, they've done a bunch of mini movies. They've done some shorts. I just think that would be great for the toys because you could focus on more. I guess now they have the Forky stuff. I only watched a few of those. But, um, yeah, I have to catch up on those. But I just think that with there being so many toys it would be so easy to just have like little 30 minute episodes about them but all of that to say toy story 4 made me real real mad 
Um, the whole point of Toy Story 3 is that they all decided to stick together no matter what, that even if Andy didn't need them anymore, that they had each other and that's what's important. And they kind of decided that like it was okay to go to another child because again, they were all together. So then Toy Story 4 rolls in and Andy, or not Andy, Woody bounces. What? I was furious at the end of that movie. So angry. And I don't understand how after all of that, he was just like, oh, well, uh, now is her name Betsy? I'm so mad I don't even remember. I think her name's Betsy. But he's like, oh, well, she doesn't like me, so it's important that I go and find somebody else. No, get out of town. And he's like, oh, well, I need to be with Bo. Who cares? What? She was gone. Was she even in two? She was definitely not in three. She might have been in two. But, like, she was. She didn't matter. And to leave, it was just really frustrating to me. So, again, like, I enjoyed the other characters that they like brought on it was fun but man that made me so angry and even like the whole point I don't know it's very hard to explain because I remember that movie being like oh well even though like your value is more than I don't I don't know how to explain it right now because I don't want to mix it up but the whole point of it being like oh it doesn't matter like, you're more important, even if you are not entertaining a child, you're still important. And, like, the whole fight with Gabby Gabby, right? Is that her name? I'm getting so jumbled up. But basically, Gabby Gabby's plot line was stupid, too, because they admitted that it didn't matter if her voice, back, voice box worked, but then her whole existence was tied to a child finding her. I don't know. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. I've still only seen that movie once. I just remember being in the theaters and looking at Sam and being like, are you kidding me right now? This is what they've decided to do. And I was real mad. So hopefully any of that jumble mess made sense. Otherwise, yikes. But yeah, let's just, we're going to move on. All right, number 15 is The Incredibles 2. I didn't realize how many of these movies are relatively new movies, so I'm hoping that nothing is getting spoiled for people, but again, hopefully you've seen them all. If you're like a true Disney fan and really care about this ranking. Um, the Incredibles 2. We waited so long for that movie, and to me, it was just a big letdown. For that movie, I really did not like any of the new characters they brought on. So that bothered me a lot. I figured out the plot real quick. That bothered me. Um, I didn't... I mean, I get the idea, but I didn't love how separated it was. Like, it was basically the plot of the first one again, except it was... Mrs. Incredible, Elastigirl instead was the main character. You know what I mean? So they hyped her up instead. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I wish that it was more of them together. And then obviously they played up Jack-Jack. Sometimes I feel like I'm watching the newer movies, Disney and Pixar, and I just can like turn to Sam and I'll be watching. I'll be like, oh, that's another Funko Pop. Oh, that's another Funko Pop. Like when they just change outfits and I'm like, yep, that's just going to be another Funko Pop. And you can just tell that they're doing it for merchandising. So that's frustrating. I didn't, didn't really love the plot. Didn't really love most of the things about Incredibles 2. I mean, it was good enough. Like Jack-Jack carried them up to what place? 15th place, but eh. I don't know. I do not know. I'm again going to interject here that opinions can change at any time. My, my list today might not be my list forever. In fact, some of the things on my list recently were placed there because, one, obviously new movies are coming out that you have to put in there. But two, just rewatching things at different times in your life will yield different results. So there's that. <sighs> but for now, 
this is how I'm feeling about all these things. I don't know. The plot was just so obvious to me. Like all the twists and whatever at the end. That is frustrating. And I would rather have seen them more as a family. And I'm pretty sure they got new outfits. Which again, in my head was just for new Funko Pops. Because why did they have to change outfits? I do not know. Edna is great though, of course. And it's so funny that Edna is like the director, right? Or the producer. Edna is some high up man in Pixar. And I don't think I knew that when the first one came out, but it just makes me giggle now that I know. I'm gonna take a standing peek and make sure we're still filming. Yup, we're doing good. Now that you can see so much more of the picture, you can also see so much more of my extra background, which I apologize for that, but I think it's one or the other, so. Whew. Right now I'm filming and it's only like 1040 at night, which is relatively early for what I've been doing. Well, it's either I film in the middle of the day because we're home alone, or I film after my dad goes to sleep and then it's late at night. And that's what's happening today. Now Samuel is off for a week, which I'm super excited about. I mean, unfortunately, we're not really going to get to do too much since we're still being safe and not going to too many places. But tomorrow we'll probably go to the pet store and get Noodles who needs a new pooper scooper. So that's fun. And then she also will get her some treats while we're there. I love bringing her to the store with us because she gets very excited. And she's like my little baby, so of course we want her to have a good day. We have 40 minutes left. How many do we have left? 14. Let's finish shading and then we'll go on. So I think, I can never tell. Or I can't tell right now, not never. This is the first time we're doing this. I can't tell if four hours is gonna be way too much time to finish this page or not at all enough time. It's hard. I have a feeling that I'm about to be finished with this, um, the water today, so that's good. One more second. Samuel, yeah. if you end up taking her, her collar's on the door. Okay. Sometimes I take her collar off at night and then I go, ooh, you nakey. But obviously we like to keep it on outside, so she ever runs away or anything people can find us or if we ever need to like snatch her up so she doesn't eat bunnies we got something to grab onto yeah so now i'm not worrying as much about leaving the white space we'll see what ends up looking better i mean it might look foolish since i've switched halfway but we will find out together Because I think I would like to finish the water today and then one other detail area. So maybe either like her tail or flounder or something like that. I might do her tail since we're focused on this half a little bit more. And then when I do flounder, we'll zoom in a little bit. Also, you got to make sure you're keeping your blender nice and sharp I'm about to not be able to use this hmm sharpener for this because it's on the extender and then the extender hits so it won't sharpen anymore so then I just get out like my tiny sharpener and manually do it let's see if it's in my cup next to me I just used this tiny one. This is actually originally a um, eyeliner sharpener. Oh no, I've hit, I've touched the monopod real bad. I'm sorry, we're shaking everywhere. Ugh. Yeah, this is originally a eyeliner sharpener or eyebrow brush sharpener or whatever. Noodles has come in here. So I don't know where Sam has gone, but okay, anyway. But it works when I can't shove the pencils in the big to gall anymore. 
Doodles, Papa's trying to take you outside. What are you doing here? You goosey girl. She does this to him where she like screams and cries to go out and then she won't go downstairs. I think he gave up on you, Noodles. So. Super itchy. Okay. <sighs> Next up, number 14 is A Bug's Life. Now, I got A Bug's Life as a gift once when I was sick. My dad, I was like couch bound, stuck there. So my dad brought me A Bug's Life home on VHS and what I will tell you is I absolutely love the short in front of A Bug's Life which is Jerry's Game which is the old man playing chess and you find out he's playing with himself and he goes on both sides but Bug's Life the movie not the best I think part of it my dad's coming. Oh my goodness. I'm going to pause for a second to be right back. He didn't even come up, but I'm nearly positive he's going to. Um, also, I did also pause the watch, just so you know. So we're still going good. And also, also, I zoomed back in because I kind of thought it's more important right now at this stage in the game that I can see what I'm filming and make sure that my head's not in it things like that and then maybe later we'll zoom out more but I was kind of distracting to see how much over here you were seeing so I think this will work out better but we'll see I bet you he comes up and noodles start screaming and then I have to pause again also let me press resume so yeah bugs life not the best I mean it's an okay one I think part of the problem is that was Pixar's second ever movie and it shows its age with the animation style so i enjoy some of the characters though so that's fun but plot wise not my favorite and it's just very dry also there's a whole big scene with a bird and you know me and birds so there's that next up is actually an interesting point it is Finding Dory, which is obviously the sequel to Finding Nemo. And it's interesting because I actually have a friend who ranked, when I had him rank, he ranked all the sequels higher. And I thought that was weird. So I'm interested in seeing how other people rank them. But for me, I'm pretty sure all of the originals rank higher than all of the sequels. I think. For the most part which you'll see as we continue on. But Finding Dory, super cute. Again, a lot of cute characters, but overall, whatever, I don't know. Um, I just think that with Finding Nemo, it was another so unique concept. And then obviously with Finding Dory, it was just a repeat concept, so. It obviously, in my mind, can't be better than the first. And again, it did feel like a lot of characters were just there to either be, be big names, like actors and actresses, which I hate the idea that um, Pixar is going in that direction at all. Like, that's one of my biggest faults with DreamWorks is that they seem to just, like, star-stud their voice actors when that never really ma mattered before to Pixar so I don't know and then also it seems like it's a lot of good merchandising opportunities so I love the otters from Finding Dory though they're not really a huge character but they're so cute and I like merchandise with them on it so there's that next up is number 12 which is Monsters University which is another sequel Monster, well, Monster University is more of a prequel, and I, I did like this one. I liked the characters, and I just thought that the whole um, fraternity plot, it was fun. 
all the activities they had to do. It was fun to watch. So I appreciated that. Um, again, number 12, we're pretty middle of the pack. So it's not the best that there was, but as far as sequels go, this is one of the higher ones. There's only one sequel that is higher than this. So that's pretty good odds for that, I would say. And obviously, all I was saying about like a star-studded cast, I guess there were stars in this movie and its predecessor, but I don't know why that didn't feel as obnoxious as with some later movies. I don't know. So who knows, whatever. I liked this one. I thought it was fun. I liked the plot, and I really think that's the difference between this one and some of the other sequels, is that I did enjoy this plot. So, there you go. Next up, we're speeding through now because we have about 32 minutes left. Let's do a few more. Number 10, nope, number 11 is Finding Nemo. So I remember seeing this movie in theaters and I was in eighth grade and we actually, it was my friend's brother's birthday party and I wanna say he was probably like seven or eight years old and my friend was allowed to bring a friend of hers to go to the movie with. I think that happens a lot. I mean, as an only child, I'm not positive, but it seems that like, oh, when it's your sibling's birthday, you can bring one person because you kind of have to go, but you don't want to just be around the little kids. So she brought me and we went to see this. Also, I later went to see Harry Potter 1 with her, so that's fun. But I liked it. It's very sad, like a lot of these Pixar movies are. Pulls out your heartstrings. Um, overall, though, I again, a lot of good characters, but it just doesn't stand out to me one of the tops. I think Marlin's annoying a little bit. Nemo's annoying a little bit. Dory's annoying a little bit. But everyone else is great, so I don't know what that says. These pieces are a lot of big pieces, and I feel like we haven't really dealt with that. But, yeah. That's, it is what it is for that one. I like it. It was definitely, again, I think that Pixar's greatest strength is that their original stories that like the concepts they come out with are really cool like p sherman 42 wallaby way sydney right i really liked obviously or not obviously but if you did not know i really enjoy underwater creatures a lot like they're my favorite category of animals so i really enjoyed a lot of that um, and actually, I do enjoy the seagulls in this movie, which might be strange because I do not like birds at all. But rumor has it that my first word, besides like mama and dada, was mine. <laughs> so don't know what it says about me as a baby or a person now, but I really enjoy that the seagulls say mine, 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 because that's something I would say too. So that's funny. Um, obviously, I don't know, Darla's part of it, eh, whatever. Very middle, I guess at number 11, it is tied for the middlest of them all. And it is tied with number 10, which is Toy Story 1. I also didn't like Toy Story 1 growing up because I was a hipster and everyone was obsessed with it and I was like I don't really see the big deal and I really like old school animation so I didn't like the weird computer whatever style noodles if you're going to cry you shouldn't be in here she just loves to cry outside the door but she won't go downstairs so that's on you ma'am I think she's also sniffing around Sam's desk to see if he has any crumbs for her to eat. <laughs> so, yeah. Toy Story 1. Noodles. What are you doing? I'm filming a video. She's just staring at me is what she's doing. It's fine. I like it now as an adult. 
as a kid, it was not my favorite, but opinions change. That's the whole point. So, and as you're noticing, or you may notice if you've been keeping up, this is the only original that didn't beat out one of its successors. So, that's fun for them. Let me do some more blending. I can't tell, like, am I going really slow? We have about half of our time left, so I think I'll be okay and make it through my water as I'm hoping. So that's great. So yeah, I'm just blending away to just get rid of any excess pencil lines if I can. And again, I'm leaving some of the white line work in an effort for it to be in hopes it looks like shiny spots, I guess, because this is supposed to be stained glass. Who knows what it really looks like? Really just differentiating the colors you're doing from little square to square is more than enough. And again, I've seen a lot of people just straight color entirely. So whatever floats your boat works. I have also been talking to Jamie a lot about trying a bunch of new and unique things in coloring books and I know she's going to come out with a whole series of ideas and I'm really excited for her to do that because then I'm going to watch them and learn and then also try them. So she has a lot of cool ideas coming up. So because she, like me, doesn't like to just do the same thing over and over again. And we like experimenting and trying cool stuff and just challenging ourselves in different ways. So I don't have a cup. Uh-oh. I'll just keep it on my little paper. Now that we're getting real low, I have to just use this pencil sharpener and I'll just keep all the shavings right on this paper and I'll throw it out at the end. Usually I have a tiny, um, it's actually a plastic cauldron for Halloween decor that I have kept to use for pencil shavings, but I think it's on my other uh, cart, which is under the window right now, and I don't wanna have to stand up and get it and leave you for any longer than I have already. So. I'm sorry if I'm extra jumbled tonight. I'm hoping it's fine. I feel a little bit extra jumbled. I really do need to film in the daytime instead of at night because I like lose all trains of thought, which is related to a uh, another movie on this list, so that's fun. But I kind of like the, the pacing of doing a few of my movie rankings and then doing some blending and then doing some movie rankings. I think that works out pretty well. And honestly, I love this book so much. I just think this already looks super beautiful. Even if I didn't color anything in any of this, all the pages, black and white, are already beautiful. So, I'm happy to color it though. My, I would love to one day like do all of it, but this one, like a lot of the French books, has some characters that are unique including like somebody from Planes, and I have not seen that movie, and just some characters I'm less familiar with. And unfortunately, it had a few fairies from like Tinkerbell, and that's fine, whatever. Like, I don't really watch those, but I could always find that. What's weird is there's like a whole repeat page, and then if you look in the back, there are tiny uh, postcard sizes of the pages, and one of the postcard sizes is of a Monsters, Inc. page. But there is no full-size Monsters, Inc. page. So I don't know if that was like a, an error and they like put in double fairies instead. I don't know if that's something wrong with my book. So if you have this book, can you check to see if you have a full Monsters, Inc. page? Because I'd be really sad if that was just my book because that page looks super cute and I don't have it to sharpen some more already because I sharpened unevenly so yeah the 
negative downside to pencils is, especially in this huge book, is you're going to be sharpening a whole bunch and you're really going to go through your pencils, but I think it's worth it. I Again, I'm no expert with pencils, so it's very possible that somebody out there has tips and tricks that extend your pencil life, but they work for me and my skill level and my purpose, so... I'm happy with my current knowledge base, if that makes any sense. Uh-huh, what else? Next up, let's get back to it. I'm running, every time, I'm very worried about running out of time because I don't wanna go more than an hour. So, next up is number nine, which is the original Incredibles. I also saw this in theaters. I'm pretty sure I've seen almost all of them in theaters and it like makes me really sad to think that I might not be able to see the next one in theaters because I don't know if we'll be ready to go to theaters when it comes out. I don't remember when it pushed to, I think November. So we'll see how the world is doing by then. But The Incredibles, this was so much fun. Like this was superheroes done right. I loved it, I thought like, I was just very entertained. I really love the whole family dynamic. Um, I remember I saw this with my friend, and there's one point where Dash is, like, running from the bad guys, and he starts running on water. And for whatever reason, that killed us. And we were laughing so hard at him running on water. And I don't think anyone else in the theater was laughing. And I feel like that's part of the magic of these movies is that, like, I have specific memories attached to almost all of these Disney movies, especially the ones that have come out in my time that I've seen in theaters. Like, I remember specifically watching all of these movies. And I think also that was why it was so disappointing, the second movie, because they really, like, cliffhangered it nicely if they wanted to just roll on. And I think I heard that they ended up doing that like mole man from the end of the first one in a video game or something so i don't know i just wish that they kept going with like them as a family fighting crime instead of the weird tangent that we had to go on before them coming back together because again i just feel like it was the same movie and while it was a great movie the first time waiting 15 years it wasn't as powerful the second time i don't know my opinion Okay, next is number eight, and this one I literally just added before I started filming. I actually have like a um, Word document on my computer where I keep a list of all my favorite movies in order, and I didn't have this one on there. This is the newest one. It is Onward, and I had trouble knowing where to put this one. <laughs> I'm adjusting to get over here so you don't have to see as much of my arm. Uh, I had trouble knowing where to put this one because as someone who lost a parent, like the plot of this one was super powerful to me and had me bawling in the theaters, another one. Actually, this is the last movie we saw in theaters before quarantine and we weren't even sure if we should go because I wanna say we saw this like two to five days before quarantine happened. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if we should go. I don't know if it's safe. But then we decided that we were expecting to be locked down for a little bit and we decided to go for it and hope for the best and be cautious while we were out. And obviously who knew what it would actually turn into. So there's that memory, but um, yeah. So this like meant a lot to me with the whole parent aspect and like doing anything you possibly could to talk to your parent again so that that really like destroyed my soul and I really liked a lot of the nerdy aspects because I am probably have mentioned before that I have a lot of nerdy friends and I personally don't play like Dungeons and Dragons or similar games but a lot of my best friends do and I just thought that that was funny and like I saw it and I was like, oh man, you guys need to see this because you're going to like a lot of it. So again, I was pretty eh about star studying it. So like I don't really care about Chris Pratt. Is that the one? I never remember which Chris is which. 
Chris Pratt and Tom Holland and Julia Louis-Dreyfus were pretty whatever to me, but I thought it was fun and a good time. But I found out Sam didn't really like it. This one we also have only seen once, so I'll preface this with that, that I need to rewatch it for sure. But for now, I think it makes number eight because initial impact, it was a good movie for me specifically. A lot of heart string tugging for me specifically. And we'll watch again. I also though, like, went to the restroom during a weird cheese it scene or something. I don't know, I missed it. So I got one of those apps that was like, oh, now's a good time to pee. I think it's called like when to pee.com or something strange. So you tell it the movie and it tells you when's the best time to go to the bathroom. So I did do that and I might've missed a few minutes, but I don't think I missed anything big. <sighs> and then, all right, number seven. I have 15 minutes left. Uh-oh. Number seven is Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. to me was so original. That concept blew my mind. I mean, for all I know, it's not original and something else was similar. But to me, I was like, holy cannoli, what a cool idea. Like, to take the idea of Monsters Under Your Bed and make it into this. And to give it this whole blot and backstory. I loved it so much. I thought it was really well done. And I just thoroughly enjoyed that plot and that movie. And Mike Wazowski and Boo. I really, really liked that one. And I also just liked John Goodman. So, I don't know. I thought that one was so cool. Blew me away. Great times. So that is number seven. Number six is Ratatouille which ratatouille is so fun i don't know i don't really have as much to say about the movies as i did the princesses because i feel like the movies like i don't do they speak for themselves i don't know i really enjoy ratatouille it grosses me out immensely the idea of a rat cooking but i just think it's so fun and another completely unique idea that was just blew me away i love movies in general that like explain something basic if that makes sense so you know even like all of the Rankin and Bass holiday movies like the Christmas movies and they also have I think Easter movies and things like that where they'll now I'm gonna struggle to think of an example but it'll be like oh Santa took the day off and that's where Christmas Eve was born or whatever it may be that's obviously not the perfect oh no okay here's one where um Santa Claus is coming to town where he wasn't supposed to be giving kids toys because the like mayor of the town banned toys so he would just put them in their stockings and like surprise the kids that way and that's why we have stockings. Like, obviously, that's not the real origin story, but I love things like that. And I feel like Ratatouille and Monsters, Inc. both had elements like that, if that made any sense. Maybe it didn't at all, but I just really like the idea of, like, all the rats working together, making the rest. I don't know. I've, I'm talking out my butt, guys. I'm losing my trains, but I just, I like that movie a lot. I like Remy. A lot. I actually almost bought a notebook that looked like the cookbook from that movie. But then they only had one in stock and it was damaged, so I did not. But, yes. <sighs> Number five is Inside Out. Inside Out is just another great movie. I just, it's so great. I think that it's probably a super helpful movie for younger kids to understand their emotions. I thought it was so cool for Joy to realize that a balance of all the emotions was important and not everything could just always be happy. I just, as somebody who I think my main driving factor or like, my guy in charge right now is probably fear. 
and as a child was probably um, anger, to be honest with you. And just like it even helps me understand where I've gone with my own life and thoughts. And I just thought it was really funny how like the dad, his head guy was anger. Was the mom's joy also or was hers disgust? I don't know, but I just think it was great. And I really love like the look into other um, characters' heads at the end and their little critters and whatever. And um, I just think it was super important movie more than anything. So I really like that one. I always try to think of what my core memories must be. I'm not sure. I think it's really fun to think about though, to try to figure out what makes you you. So I recommend that one as all the way up at number five. Also Bing Bong's great. I honestly, when we first saw it, so I am really good at like predicting movies, endings and things like that. So when we first were seeing it, I thought Bing Bong was gonna be the bad guy. And I like whispered that to Sam, but luckily he was not. He was just the good guy and makes you cry guy. So yeah, I'm doing less and less of the white and I think it's looking better. So we'll see, I don't know. I can always just like go over it a little bit if we don't like the white, which now I think I'm off screen, but that's, that's fine. So, okay. Um, number four, we're getting up to the heavy hitters. Does anyone remember what's left? I don't know if anyone remembers. Well, number four is Toy Story 3. So, Toy Story 3 is my favorite out of the Toy Story universe, series, whatever words you want to call it. I think 3 was nearly a perfect movie. Obviously, part of what made it so great is the nostalgia of 1 and 2. So, if... Three could never have been the first movie, of course, but I really loved it. Um, again, I loved the message of three, which was that they all were important to each other and like stuck together no matter what. I really love Lotso. Um, I think he's a great villain and super cute. I actually purchased a Lotso stuffed animal afterwards but what makes me sad about it is that he does actually smell like strawberries, but he does not, like, when you buy him, he comes pre-dirtied because he's in the movie, like, old and loved and used. But in real life, I wish that he came nice and fluffy and new. So that was a weird decision, I think. But also, I mean, maybe I wasn't aware of it, but I feel like they didn't really start with the merchandise until Toy Story 3. And I'm like, Toy Story is the perfect movie to have merchandise for. So I'm glad they like made that decision. But, um, yeah, yes. I really, like Toy Story 3 was just perfect. I did a lot of crying in Toy Story 3. It was a very powerful movie. For me, but again, in part was the nostalgia. So I understand that Toy Story 3 needed at least one. I don't know about two. I still don't like Jesse. Sorry, not sorry. I, she just annoys me. I don't know what it is about her. But even in all the shorts, I just don't like her. I just don't like her. I do love a lot of the new characters in 3 too. Like a lot of... Bet is it Betsy? Why well, keep I keep calling her Betsy, and I don't know if that's right, and now I'm upset about it. It feels like it's Betsy, though. And I was almost going to say Trixie, but Trixie is the new elephant. Like, I loved Mr. Prickle Pants a lot. I loved uh, Trixie. <sighs> I love, like, the clown and Big Baby. I love a lot of the characters that we got from 3. And, oh, Ken. Great times. Obviously, lots of. So... I really enjoyed that movie. Number three is Coco. Man, Coco's good. If you have not seen Coco, you need to. It is such a good movie. It is another tearjerker. I think, really, what Pixar movie doesn't make you cry? You know what the answer is? All the ones on the bottom of my list. Honestly, they make me cry too. Every Pixar movie makes me cry. I'm a crybaby, it's fine. 
But Coco was so good. The songs were so good. Like, just the imagery was amazing. Like, when he goes into that world. It's so good. At first, I was worried that, like, a lot of the songs are in Spanish. If not entirely, at least partly. And I was worried that I wouldn't understand them because I don't understand Spanish. But it didn't matter. Like, it was still such a good time. Uh-huh. It's so, so good. It's so cute. I really, really like that one. And I'm looking forward to watching it again next month, probably. I'm going to talk about that in another video. But I make myself like a movie watch list for Halloween season. And I usually start in September because there's a lot of movies on that list. So Coco is definitely going to be one of them. And I'm very excited because it's so, 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 so good. Also, that one had a bunch of big plot twists. I'm pretty sure I guessed the first one and then the second one came and was like, bam! And I was like, wow! So that's always fun for somebody who thinks that they can know it all. Whew. Two left, you probably know. Number two is up wow up is so good ah, now we get to the top and i just don't have anything to say besides i love it and it's so great so i love it and it's so great i love carl i love kevin which is weird because he's kind of or she's kind of a bird maybe we don't know what she is i love doug i love i love them i love them so much my goodness was that a sad intro to that movie holy cannoli I think now, like, the older I get, the sadder that is going to be with the whole, like, infertility thing. Oof. Oof. Um, I did buy myself a little grape soda pin in Disney. And I just love it so much, guys. I just love that he, like, found someone. Both of them needed each other. And it worked out in the end. I can't believe how sprightly uh, Mr. Fredrickson was for a lot of that. So let's not pretend that these movies are accurate in any way to uh, his physical prowess. But wow, what a great movie. I do wish that we got even more of Ellie. Maybe one day they'll do like a short and have them as a married couple. I doubt it. And I'm sure if they did, everyone would be like, why are you ruining my childhood? Which I kind of hate when people say that because it's over your childhood happened so if you find out stuff now it's not ruining your childhood if anything it's ruining your adult life but whatever now you're a big boy or girl so that's fine <laughs> but oh such a good movie and that leaves a numero uno my absolute favorite pixar movie is the one the only wally I love Wally. I have had people come to me and be like, how did you like this? There's like eight words in the whole movie. I don't know what it is. He is just the sweetest, most endearing little robot. And I just love him so much. His, all his little mannerisms are so cute. His love for Eve is so sweet and pure. Oh my goodness. I love all the other little robots, which now I can't remember what the name of the cleaning robot was. But it was just like the cleaning robot... Oh no, I was uh, coloring in the hole. And I almost made a mark in my page. Ah! Sorry, Timothy. Timothy's on the back. But the little cleaning robot following her around was so sweet. All the robots just interacting was so sweet. And I, oh, I love that movie so much. The music is really nice. The whole message I really enjoyed. Like, conservation is important. And it's so important. That everyone sees that movie. It's so cute. I love his little um, cockroach pet. It's a really good movie. And I love it. I actually have a Wally pillowcase that I sleep with every night. And I actually loved it so much that I like went on eBay and bought a second one. And it was to give as Sam as a gift. But then I just stole it back and keep it myself. Because I've probably used that pillowcase every day for 10 years. 
obviously I've washed it, but then I put it right back on. Like I don't take it out of rotation. I just take it right out of the dryer and put it back on. And that's like my security pillowcase. So if you haven't seen any of these movies, you definitely should. They're all on Disney Plus, I think. Definitely check your library out. Wherever you gotta go to get them, you should see them. I would absolutely love to know what your favorites are or least favorites. Fight me in the comments, that's fine. I wanna hear your opinions. I'm really waiting to hear what other people think of Merida because I'm ready to fight you on that. I didn't like it. And I love bears too, so you would think that they would have the edge, but no, no, no. Also, I've untwisted my blender. So oopsie doodle there. But definitely let me know. Let me know how you're enjoying this series. I have like a minute, two minutes left to finish blending this all out before our hour timer goes off. Um, let me know how you're enjoying this. I hope you're ready because it looks like we're definitely going to need two more segments. And again, at the end of the two segments, if I am not done, I will definitely just be speed coloring the rest um, so you can get your finished page out of it. I really love being able to show the finished pages in the same video whenever I physically can because I hate the idea that you commit to me for that whole hour or whatever it may be and don't necessarily get to see the finished because I know not everybody has Instagram. I will, of course, show them in the end of the month, but it's just more satisfying, in my opinion, to get it all at once. So that is my current goal overall. And yeah, we have two more parts. Next part is going to be my favorite characters that are not princesses. So I'm pretty sure that is Disney and Pixar. I'm sticking to all the animated. I'm sure that's been apparent by now, but we're not gonna worry about any of the live action stuff, at least in this series. And again, I really hope you're enjoying. So let me know what your favorite Pixar movie is and your least favorite. And if you've made it this far, say flounder, please. You can't see him, but I pointed to him. We have exactly 37 seconds left. Um, my plan for the next video might be the border. So I'm probably going to do a whole bunch of purples. So I'm gonna do her little clamshells and then the border in a bunch of purples. Purple is my favorite color. And we will go from there. Next time I will definitely do some sort of small detail. I can't believe how long this took me. I'm really worried about my four hours, but we're gonna make it, make it happen, get it done. Next part, characters. Part after that will be my favorite movies, my top 15. I was thinking of doing my least favorite movies too, but a lot of the least favorite ones are actually um, like all the ones from the 40s that no one's seen. So I actually ranked Brave as my least favorite, if you want my honesty. So on my list, it is number 75. So that's really how I feel about that. So I hope that doesn't offend anybody, but we've made it to the end of this one. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you have, remember write flounder down in the comments, comment, um, subscribe, bell notifications, like this video, all that fun and usual stuff. And I'll see you again in two days. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.